Oh, hello there, and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. As always, I'm joined by Johnny Ward and Gavin Lynch. You all, guys? Good, good. All good. Good stuff. We're going to start off with a little look back to last week and some good and bad. Start with you, Gavin. So, uh, something good. Something good. I suppose the joy of the week was uh, Captain Joy, a uh, nine-year-old Tracy Collins, uh, won very well, very honest horse, and is ready to go for Linkfield again, I'd say. Yeah, we'll look forward to that on Good Friday. Johnny? Uh, Connor Heavey winning on uh, Gunmaker was actually the high of the week, really, because he's a young lad who's been working for Gavin Cromwell. He did kind of cost us the win on Texas Radio, which was a bit costly, but uh, it's nice to see a young lad. You know, 20 to 1 the horse was, just shows how adept Gavin is as well. Yeah, absolutely. And again, another story of another good apprentice making a name for himself on the on uh, Dundalk stand yeah, over the Friday night. And there are some good we've, had lot, we've seen lots of it, haven't we? I think there are a lot more promising flat riders than jumps riders uh, in the younger end of the spectrum at the moment. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's an unfair point. Right, let's start off with the Friday night action then. First up at five o'clock, got this uh, mile and a half maiden for older horses, uh, probably not laden with stars. Maybe what Joseph's runner there, Uncle Henry, eye catching last time out. Anything else to win into you? Not particularly. I'd say I'd go for Uncle Henry. It's a uh, drawn six, done a rides. Uh, third the last day over ten and a half to Rooster, who won since uh, Nivo was beaten since, but ran quite well. Uh, it's open enough race. There are other horses with chances, but I think Uncle Henry's the safest. Choice. Johnny? Yeah, I hate his stallion, Henry the Navigator, and I'm not going to go with him nearly as such. I don't think he's much good anyway. Now, Duke of Washington is by Duke of Marmalade, who wouldn't have uh, set the world light uh, as a stallion. I think he's yeah. in some obscure outpost now yeah. doing, <laughs> doing his job over there. But uh, his horses do need time, and Duke of Washington started off in bumpers. Had a lovely run actually um, here when he actually was ahead of one of his rivals, a golden poet. I think if he comes on to that, he's a very, very solid bet. One yeah. of my bets of the meeting each race. Good stuff. Well, on to the uh, second race of the evening then. This uh, Matthews Dot, a trip to Cheltenham. Good good coaches to use, by the way, if you are yeah. a Brendan Duck. Uh, this is the first division, it's 45 to 65. Anything jumping off the page at you for this? I think a uh, horse like Bog War will get a mention. Marina Marvel, who's not from 14 in the fact, will get a mention, but it, it has to be Schindler's Ark. Yeah. In here off 53. He ran for Charles O'Brien. Pay off 58, was fifth here, uh, but had a good run over hurdles for Gordon. It wasn't the best maiden hurdle in the world in Cork. Uh, the second horse, Galti Moore, was rated 68 in the flat. The third horse only beaten two lengths is Tilda Zipan on 47. So it was a weak maiden hurdle, but off 53, Schindler's Ark is one of the bets of the night. I good think. stuff. Glad you mentioned Bog War, Johnny. Yeah, Bog War is an old friend of mine, but he hasn't really been in form. And no, he hasn't won since 2015. Or no, um, remember him. Doing Beat us a Swan few favours at the Galway Festival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, now, Schindler's Ark is one of these horses that'll be backed overnight and then will drift at the track. I can't explain that, but a lot of these Gordon Elliott horses at Dundalk seem to do that. This horse looks too well in to be let to let, to let go under Gary Halpin. Gordon has a 9% strike rate, I think, at Dundalk. It's, it's OK. It's not his priority. Um, this is not a good race. He should have a great chance. Good stuff. So second division of that one then uh, off at 6 o'clock. Again, it's not the greatest renewal. What, what, do, you, what do you fancy here? What do you think, Johnny? Tough. Uh, went with Steely Eyed. He's form at Fairy House over this trip is good enough to win. Pat Martin's horse are running well. Porik Beggy, he only wins on yeah. group winners at the moment. Well, this know. guy was fifth in a derby last year. Yeah, there you are. There you um, the Apprentice Derby, frankly. <laughs> yeah, uh, the boy Beggy, you know, the highest group races, uh, group races to non group races ratio, I would say, ever in, his, in, in the, the history. Year. Yeah. But he's well able to ride Porik and Steely Eyed, uh, nice run last time, mile and a half is fine. Good chance. Gavin? Uh, go for Temasek Star. I think that um, Anthony McCann has horse in great form over the winter at Dundalk. It hasn't run since July in Leprosan with a one over a mile and seven. It does travel very, very well. It doesn't always battle, but it did that day in Leprosan. Previously, it was uh, second of 68. Gets in here off 65. Uh, Conor McGovern is down to ride two horses, but I'm sure he'll ride that one. Good stuff. Right, on to the uh, 6.30. This is pretty decent handicap, this one, in fairness, over 10 furlongs. So you got the likes of Zayfu and uh, Ajubo last time out winners. What do you fancy? I'd like the first reserve, but usually reserves don't get in and no. don't Caracas, so that's a waste of time. Um, Sharjah and Carried will probably take each other on maybe up front. They like to front run. That's a key point as well, the pace yeah. in this race, I think. I think like Carried got a bad ride the last day, realistically. He went on 10-15 clear, but it's drawn 14. Sharjah has a better draw. I think it's very, very difficult. I'll just token selection would be Shannon Soul for Pat's one and drawn seven that they go quick. They yeah. went quick the last day, but it just stays and stays. It's breaking a little bit better lately. John Murphy wouldn't have a great record at Dundalk either, um, but I think St. Gallen is fairly interesting, particularly on his run at Killarney earlier in the year. He's very well handicapped at this stage. Probably quite a, a valuable horse if he were to be sold dual purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, a horse out of the yard can sell very well also as well. Um, and Billy Lee could be key to him with so much pace. I could see this horse tanking into the straight. Um, 
and he has an each way chance. Yeah, good stuff. I'm actually quite sweet and in that race, actually. He's an yeah, excellent no, record over course and distance. Laughter, yeah. uh, would you be surprised if Zayfu gets backed? No, no. I, I, that horse progressed nicely. Just needed to settle. Um, Going to be a lovely two-mile hurdler, I think, as well. In yeah, the course. I think it's an off 77. I know. Well, uh, for a change, we're actually going to take a little break now. So uh, we'll be back after this. Bet on racing. You can bet on racing post. Right, and we're back. We'll uh, be straight into the uh, straight into the seven o'clock. Then forty-five sixty-five over a mile here. Anything to work the page at you, Gavin? It looks a poor contest, doesn't it? Uh, Indian Tomahawk has to get a mention. <clears throat> I'm going to go for a recent winner there, Lady Rosebud, fifty-one to sixty-one. One well for Conor McGovern. He rides this instead of a horse for Anthony McCann. It's a three-time winner at the track. Travels very strongly. The low draw will suit. It actually even went won last week by three lengths. Uh, the previous time it. Um, Travelled too keen, so hopefully it settles. Yeah, it settles. You've got plenty of, got a plenty of of 10 pens, but 10, 10 pens about yeah. harsh and all. Uh, Johnny, your thoughts? Uh, this is one of the most frustrating things in gambling. When you tip a horse, it disappoints, mm. and then a week or two later, it beats the horse that you bet in that race. <laughs> and this is Lady Rose. <laughs> this happens a lot in Dundalk. It's very frustrating. Sure. Um, when, it, when it comes up and you're just like, it, it, it kind of does grave with me a bit, but such is life. I really like, I wanted to take this horse on because it was the last time I winner in a moderate race. It's gone up a lot. But I just couldn't. I couldn't come up with anything um, solid to beat it. Obviously, World's Greatest on the pick of its form has a chance, but it's been a bit disappointing. He's our music. is very well in if he can just finally rediscover his best. Um, Latina Hybra, good comeback run for Lee Roach. Had been with Jim Bulger. Might can get the mile, so Lady Rosebud. Lady, Lady Rosebud by process of elimination, mm, I guess. Yeah. Right, on to the uh, seven furlong handicap then at 7.30. And uh, yeah, I'm with Invincible Riker here because I'm you a like fan. Him. I love Invincible yeah. Riker. Love yeah. the Riker. And he's, yeah. he's, uh, he, looked, he looked like he had more in the tank and he won last time out. So the I would pick it off with him. Behind him the last They're all here the again, yeah. I'm actually think there's a, a horse here that's going to be a big price each way. Oh, yeah. Uh, Great Danube, okay, he's nine years old, but he won this race last year off 88. He runs here off 84. He's only ever won over five, six, and seven furlongs. He just about stays seven. The last day, he ran over a mile, went way too keen because they had Secret Wizard and Geological to take it on. I've gone through every runner. I don't think there's too many horses to take it on. Arborfield might, Artistic Melody might, but if it gets a solo, they've won this race last year from st stall eight, and it's stall eight again. Wow. Well, there you so go. So same stall again. Yes. Oh, that's good stuff. Right, Johnny, beat that. Uh, the old boy rummaging, just tentative. He's in good form. Smullen isn't on him. Uh, Connor Hoban rides him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not confident, but he's my each way selection. Uh, it's very, very open. Uh, I think one of nearly 11 of them could win it. Um, rummaging tentatively. Yeah, tricky seven runner race, the penultimate one, the bar one race here. Uh, and a couple of last time out winners in it. W what do you fancy here? Or this, is, this is a nice race, actually. And Canford Art, in fairness, she did the job despite very yeah. much betraying her inexperience on debut. Uh, I was at Dundalk that night, uh, spoke to Peter Fahey in the bar afterwards, but don't remember much about it because I was having a good night with her. <laughs> okay. But uh, he, he did like her a lot, and I thought, she was, I thought she'd come on a lot from that. She yeah. was slow out of the gates. For her to actually win that race, uh, was quite notable, uh, not even though it wasn't a strong race. And on that base, I don't think six furlongs will be yeah. an issue. Conditions um, of the race suit her as well. Yeah, like running. obviously fancy dresser on the ratings and Barra Steps. Um, I'm not sure about Barra Steps. Fairly frustrating horse in ways, but um, I think it's time to let go of Barra Steps. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think it's time we can just let yes. him go. Gavin, your thoughts? Uh, Barra Steps. She's only rated 78 after seven runs, so she's not really improving, is she? Uh, Canford Art has to be the one. I'd say this will get well punted. Yeah. Uh, it definitely missed the break. It was very well punted the last day, so I'd say there'd be plenty of money for it. Will it stay the six? Because it shows so much gears, but if it stays the six, it should win. Good stuff. A decent six for long handicapped close. I'll kick it off. I'm with Silk Cravat here, uh, although has Shocker a bad draw. draw. Shocker bad draw. Shocker yeah. draw. But, uh, you, can, you can overcome that, though. Um, Master Speaker's an interesting horse. He, he won, I think he won over course and trip for Aidan O'Brien long, long, long ago, and then he went to uh, the Tipperary stable of the Hassets. Yeah. And now he's moved on to Adam McGuinness, who's in good form. Annoyingly so, did me for a few bob last week as well. Uh, but Burn the Boats is my selection here. A really strong horse. Won for Ger Lines here before. Now with John Fien, who yeah. supplied Texas Radio last week. And uh, very nice one. The last day, Shane Foley takes the ride. I think if it's a good gallop, he's a strong enough each-way chance. Yeah, he stays further. And Gavin? 
it was a very tough card all night, but this is very tough again. Just to point out, Quarizmi uh, gets a £16 age allowance along with the Joe for Brian Hart. Will it get the old. six? It's only carrying a seven stone 13 with Ben Cohn claimants. That's interesting. Yeah. Brave display is just about my pick. It was very unlucky the last time over five. Got to give a mention to the geological. I was just about yeah, to, yeah. Cause yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you there. No, you're all right. Yeah, because the, the tweet from Damien English. Oh, yeah, amazing. I, I remember I'm buying this horse for 800 guineas, and I said, like, there must be something if, wrong. If you ever had 800 quid and you trust yeah. someone with it, I think it'd be Damien English, wouldn't you? He's now won six figures in prize money. 120 grand in prize money, and he's 20 euro to a level stake profit as well. He's due to phenomenal horse. 10 stone 11 here, but Steve Mooney has taken 10 pound off. That's... Drawn to that could make all. Even yeah, could jump out. And he, he hasn't ridden the winner yet. So I mean, the the race he ran in last week compared yeah. to the oh, race yeah, yeah, yeah. is night and day. The funny thing about him was he was with Richard Hannon, right? And I can only assume people thought, well, he's not going to improve out of Richard Hannon. It's, just, it's not that he's improved an awful lot. He's just paid his way. Yeah, you know, he's absolutely. What a, what a wonderful horse. Loves racing. Even uh, even the uh, jockeys. He's a friend for jockeys. Mm. Well, she had ten riding fees out of here. Best bets of the evening. Johnny, start with you. Schindler's Ark is the nap. The next best is Duke of Waspington and the third selection is in the finale burn the boats burn the boats come on Gavin uh, the nap is Camford Art the best e tree value I think is Great Danube and lastly the third selection is Schindler's Ark good stuff I am going for Adieu in the 6.30 Steely Eyed in the 6 o'clock and Invincible Riker as well friend of the show thanks for watching thanks for listening and we'll be back with more Friday Night Lights next week